Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So, following hard on the heels of his controversial denunciation of President Trump, Common Speaker John Berko has insisted his ability to act impartia impartially is not damaged by reports that he voted to remain in last year's referendum. The Sunday Telegraph today reports that Speaker Berko revealed his views on why he was a Remainer and much more about his attitudes to issues in the ongoing Brexit debate to an audience of students at Reading University earlier this month. Here he is speaking at that event. This may not be popular with some people in this audience, Personally, I voted to remain. I thought it was better to stay in the European Union than not, partly for economic reasons, being part of a big trade bloc, and partly because I think we're in a world of power blocks, and I think for all the weaknesses and deficiencies of the European Union, it's better to be part of that big power bloc in the world. Speaker Berko speaking at Reading University earlier this month. Julia, is he now just off the reservation? Does he now not care? Yes, I, I certainly get that impression. He knows perfectly well, even on the Commons website, it states he has to be politically neutral, even in retirement. Mm. Uh, the reality is that we, whether or not there are going to be enough votes to force him out. Um, the question is, you know, the last speaker went out and there were just 20 votes against him. You have to have the, the you know, command, the support across the House. There's already waiting Deputy Speaker Lindsay Hoyle, who'd be superb as Speaker. And we saw that when the SNP was singing uh, during the vote on Article 50, and he shut that down with humour, with style without putting anyone down I think I think even the people who pretend to support Speaker Berko have had enough of his uh, highfalutin ways the, the interesting thing about Mr Berko is why I ask is whether he really cares now where he thinks he's untouchable is he didn't just tell the students uh, that he voted to remain he then gave them a running commentary on all the issues that will be part of the Brexit negotiations workers rights immigration trade policy even maternity leave uh, got a hat tip from him. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be a very well-prepared Brexit minister, actually, if David <laughs> Davis needs a, needs a colleague, which is not, not his place to do so. I don't think this story on its own makes his position untenable. What does, maybe, is the wider pattern of behaviour of excessive candour on his political views going back years. This is a guy who, when the Queen visited Parliament a few years ago, re referred to her as the kaleidoscope queen of a kaleidoscope country, whatever that means. Uh, he also, I think, had a running argument with David Cameron, who was the sitting Prime Minister of the day. We know his views on uh, Brexit. We know his views on Donald Trump. He's given interviews talking about his epic personal journey from conservatism to liberalism. None of these views are illegitimate, but the candour with which they're expressed from a position which is meant to be scrupulously neutral, I think, is quite problematic. And I'd be interested to know whether, given that Lindsay Hoyle, I agree, is a class act, and He's a, the deputy speaker at yes, the moment. Yes, and a fairly ready replacement. Whether there is more of a movement now to say, maybe not force Burko out, but acknowledge that he's had a few years in the job and the, the question of successorship uh, comes into play now. Has he concluded that he's untouchable? Well, I, well, what I can definitely say is that he is absolutely determined to fight this one out and not go of his own volition. So if he goes, he'll have to be forced out. Mm. He wants to stay, Which I think, for the whole of this parliament. Which will be tough, I think, unlikely as things stand. I'd also say this. I mean, I speak to someone who likes the way he's brought the House of Commons to life, held ministers to account, forced mm. them in to explain mm. things. Whenever there's a topical issue, you now know it's going to be in the House of Commons. Indeed, and he um, has changed that. He's, that's, he's single-handedly changed that, and time's been quite courageous. So that's where I'm coming from on this. I, I admire the way he's been a speaker. And I would say this, that during the referendum campaign, he asked me, Nick Clegg, Dan Hannan and Peter Hitchens <coughs> to go and debate Brexit in his constituency. It was a packed out meeting. He chaired it and I said, don't you want to join in the debate? And he didn't. He was utterly impartial. He showed no desire to join in. And I think what he does is he goes out to these universities and kind of demythologizes Parliament by speaking to all these students in a rather admirable way. He doesn't get any credit for it. Um, and he stays on afterwards and drinks with them for ages and stuff. And sometimes... <laughs> he doesn't get any credit for that. No, not, yeah, not accessibly. But I mean... Um, 
sometimes he, you know, it's clearly a mistake to have gone into all his views retrospectively on that referendum campaign. I don't think that... It, I mean, did he try and stop Article 50 from being triggered in the House of Commons? That would be a scandal. No, but he could, that, this that, is that, even that would be beyond it. Just very briefly, yes or no. Could you imagine Betty Boothroyd behaving like that? No, but... Could you imagine... Not Betty? at all. No. Could none, you? none of the recent speakers I could imagine doing that. Very but nice. it's, it's good that you he's a different... You just have not you? <laughs> and he did. <laughs> I've been getting away with it all.